Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our event-driven architecture. But in this video, we are going to talk about how event-driven architecture is going to work in action. Instead of the discussion that we did in our earlier video where we saw how an event-driven architecture works and what is event-driven architecture and how event-driven architecture is different from the classical monolith system versus the microservice system and how the event-driven architecture is replacing all those communication between microservices and in this video we will be discussing how those systems are actually working. So in order to understand the event-driven architecture in a working fashion, I have created a simple application which is going to behave something like this. It is going to have a consumer who is going to consume a web application and this web application is going to hold all the product information. So every time while a customer purchases a specific product, then it is going to be reducing the number of count of that particular product in the inventory system. So that is the super basic simple application that I have built. I mean, this thing is something we can even build from the classical APIs, classical microservices. It can be of anything for that matter. But just that the way the system is going to communicate is going to be event driven. And the good thing about this system is that if there are going to be a number of users going to come in and they're going to be placing the order at the same time, then that's going to reduce the number of inventory on the inventory system. That's what is going to be basically happening. But all these things are going to be happening automatically from an event driven system using the event driven architecture that we discussed in our earlier video. So in order to make this understand even more better in a system view instead of just the user journey view that we saw earlier, this is what is the system going to look like. Basically, I have built a system where it is going to have a consumer and it is going to have a inventory service. So there are going to be like two services. And again, I have not built any UI to show you how it actually works. They are going to be basically in a Swagger UI view and it is going to have a consumer service. It's going to have an inventory service. So from the customer a service, it is going to keep listening for a queue, which is on the topic exchange. Uh, and that queue is nothing but the inventory product queue. So every time if there is going to be a new product added, then that particular queue will be updated. And this guy, the customer knows that there is going to be a new product or the existing product has a number of product count increased, something like that. So that's going to be something the customer's service is going to keep listening. And there is going to be a inventory service, which is going to keep listening for the inventory queue of the customer, where it is going to be uh, looking for if there is any change in the event from the customer. For example, let's say 10 computers this customer has bought, then this particular uh, inventory event is going to keep listening for this queue and then it is going to update its inventory system that, all right, my existing computer has actually got updated from like 30 available to 20 right now because this customer has bought uh, 10 computers from there. So that's how the things are going to happen. That's why this uh, line is like listening line and this is like a pushing event. So you can see this is a bit hard lines over here. So every time the inventory is going to add any new product, it's going to push an event on this particular queue from this particular topic, obviously. And then this customer is going to push an event if there is going to be any uh, purchase going to happen for a particular product. And all these listenings are going to happen from two different places. So this is what is the whole system. I mean, this is a very, very super simple system that I have designed. And you can see that this application is built using .NET Core uh, and uh, ASP.NET. And you can see that I'm using a RabbitMQ over here and it's a RabbitMQ service, which is going to be uh, listening for the event. And you can see this is the event listening and you can see it's keep li listening for the uh, queue inventory dot product, which is nothing but our customer service and the inventory service. As I told you, it's going to be keep listening for the inventory customer. So if you go over here in the uh, inventories service, you will see that he is actually listening for the inventory customer and they both are actually pointing to the topic exchange as I was talking about this one, right? So the topic is same, but the queues are a bit different. That's the only change. All right. So this is the whole system that we are going to be discussing in this particular video and we'll see how this whole thing's actually going to work. That's what I was talking about in our earlier video as well. The event driven system is quite interesting. It's all going to be communication between the systems and how they will communicate within each other as a service from this particular queue. And once again, the queue that I'm talking about over here is nothing but the RabbitMQ. All right, so now this particular service, which I, 
I have built is actually running as a uh, Docker container and I have created a Docker Compose file for the RabbitMQ and also for the customer and for the inventory. And as I told you, these are all gonna be like a microservices and these will be deployed as a microservices as well. So in order to run this, I'm gonna go over here in my terminal and then you can see I, we have this particular Docker Compose file, which is cool. And then we are gonna do a Docker Compose hyphen P of VDA and I'm gonna say up. So first of all, we need to do a build because uh, we have this particular uh, application and you can also see if I just show you all the images that I have got I don't really have any image for the application so let me try first building them and now if I see docker images you will see that I have the EDA customer and the EDA inventory now let's try to do the docker compose hyphen p of up to start all our services and up and running and the process of up, you can see that it is gonna pull the RabbitMQ uh, once again for us um, from the Docker Hub. And also during this particular process, it is gonna uh, download the particular RabbitMQ, it's gonna start the service. And while the applications are up and running, it is also gonna do a script that I have injected within my Docker Compose, where it is going to actually create the RabbitMQ uh, definitions, something like this. And as you can see over here, uh, it has the inventory customer, it has the inventory product, and it has the topic exchange, which is gonna be created on the fly inside the RabbitMQ so that the customer and the inventory can communicate with each other using the uh, topic. And also, the services are built in such a way that they will wait for the RabbitMQ to fully up and running, and only then they will start the service. So basically, that's the good thing about the Docker Compose file as well. And there we go, you can see that the application is now up and running uh, and also the RabbitMQ is up and running as well. So you can see that the RabbitMQ is currently uh, running on uh, the port number as mentioned over here. I think it's 15672. Uh, so if I go to the Firefox browser over here, localhost, and if I go to the RabbitMQ, you can see that there is this queue for inventory customer and the inventory product up and running. And there is this exchange which is gonna have a topic for the topic.exchange for us. And all these things are currently up and running which means all the customers and uh, the product queues are being listened by our uh, services. So now if I go over here and if I just do a docker ps hyphen a, you will see that the applications are up and running and up for like five minutes over here, which is cool. So now we can access our application. So let's go to the application. So the first thing is we're gonna access the uh, customer application. So if I go to a local host of uh, 8,000, I think it's 5,000 and 5,001. So let me see if I change it to 5,000. You can see that we have this customer up and running. And then we have the local host of 5001. Yep, it's 5001, just remove that HTTPS. And you can see that we have the inventory up and running. So uh, as you can see over here, if I go to the customer and if I try it out right now, uh, you will see that I don't really have any of the product at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is like as a inventory uh, person, like uh, let's say I'm a company, where I'm gonna create a set of uh, products right now. So let's say I'm gonna create a computer uh, and I have like uh, 20 computers. And then I'm also gonna uh, sell some keyboard. So it is gonna have, uh, let's say uh, 30 keyboards, something like that. So I just have uh, executed this API with the 30 keyboards and uh, the t uh, 20 uh, computers. And now if I go back over here, and you can see that instantly on the RabbitMQ for the person who is listening for the inventory product, you can see there are two events being triggered. And these two events are being triggered automatically from our uh, product inventory service. And now if I go and execute this guy uh, in the customer, even over here, I could see there are two products automatically coming. So this is coming based on the listening of the event happening from our code that you can see over here. So within the uh, customer, so you can see that I'm actually keep listening for the event. So you can see that it is currently gonna show me the X received, something like that. And this X received is something you can even see on the uh, Docker log file. 
So uh, if I am going to show you on the customer side over here, you can see that it has received the keyboard and the computer automatically. So the customer is actually receiving the inventory details, which is cool. And now let's try to see if the customer actually could able to place an order and the computer uh, quantity is actually reducing on the product side automatically. So if I just place all these details over here for the, the customer details, as you can see here, I'm placing the product ID as one, which is gonna be for the computer that we have got, because I know that the ID is actually one for the computer. Uh, and then I'm also gonna place the number of item as 10. So you can see that we have 20 computers and he's gonna place 10 items already on the cart. And the address probably he's gonna say, um, North Shore and City Auckland, country as NZ. And if I try executing this particular uh, customer detail over here, you can see that he has already placed an item, like place an order of 10. And the moment he plays that, you will see that I didn't even call any other API based on the event listening happening. You will see that on the inventory side, automatically the quantity from 20 has been reduced to 10. So you can see that even the inventory service is actually listening for the event which is actually coming through. So you can see that as well. So if I just do a docker ps hyphen a, uh, you will see there is an inventory service. Uh, if I just do a docker logs of that particular service, you will see that it has actually uh, got a message over here like total bot as 10 and that's the reason it knows that for the id number one total bot of 10 so which means it was computer so it has reduced that automatically so these are all happening based on the events for us and the rabbit mq is quite useful in this particular place because it knows that this is what the event has happened so if you go to this uh instead of last 10 minutes so let's say if i just make it like last hour or something like that uh over here um on that particular customer, probably you will see that this particular event is actually coming up, right? So this is how the whole event-driven architecture actually works. And this is quite cool to see that all these things are coming up together and makes things much, much easier. And you don't really have to necessarily call a lot of API to keep updating. So that's what I was actually telling about the event-driven architecture, even our earlier video. In the event streaming architecture, the pattern is completely diverse here each service will tell what the event has occurred. If the other service interested into this particular event, they will get it. If not, the event will be queued forever. And that's the tell and get pattern that we saw. So that's exactly what, what we saw in this particular video and hope you really like how this event streaming architecture works. Once again, thank you for watching this video and you guys have a great day.